kind of walked by. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Mockboff. I think we'll get started in just a minute, so find your seats. Okay, folks, uh, let's get started. For those of you who haven't seen Gritty before, the uh, delightful figure in front of you is the mascot of the Philadelphia Flyers and a beloved figure there in Philadelphia. I regret that I'm not able to join you myself. Uh, unfortunately, I managed to blow out my back right before getting on the plane, uh, and the combination didn't seem like a good one. Uh, so uh, you are ably represented in the room by my colleague, Alan. Alan, say hi. Hello, good morning, everyone. Alan will be handling all of the um, in-room queue management, et cetera, and we'll be trying to drive the slides and this together. Uh, first and foremost, note well. Uh, something not on the note well, but we've been asked to emphasize for those of you in the room is that it is very important to keep your masks on. Uh, if you need to actively eat or drink, uh, please uh, step into the hall and do that. But while you're in the room, please leave your mask on unless you're actively speaking at one of the mics. And I think you'll find that the mics are sensitive enough uh, that you'll be able to, um, to be heard just fine if you choose to leave them on even there. Uh, the note well that you see. Let me just jump in real quick, Ted, and say, I think I see a few folks maybe not wearing masks. So just double check if you can touch your face and there's not a mask there, I'll try to fix that. <laughs> Go ahead. Yep. Uh, uh, somebody noted in the chat that it appears they're getting a little bit of distortion from my mic. I've moved it a little bit further away. Hopefully that helps. Um, this is the note well. Uh, since we're Wednesday of the week, you've probably seen it before, but just as a reminder, uh, please uh, note that you are responsible for maintaining uh, your conduct according to uh, each of the BCPs you see uh, listed below. Uh, this is our agenda. First, I want to uh, say thank you to uh, uh, Hunter and to Luke, uh, Lucas. Uh, Hunter uh, will be taking notes locally and uploading them later. And Lucas is sorry, Luca is uh, doing um, a backup there. So we do have scribes. We very much appreciate that. Uh, the second thing uh, to remind you is that because this is a BOF, there will be a set of BOF questions. You'll see a preview in just a moment. That means that we will be using the question tool that's part of the, uh, the system, the show of hands tool. Uh, if you're on the, the desktop system, it's between the bell and the file folder. Uh, it looks like a little um, uh, chart. Uh, so please make sure that if you're in the room, uh, that you're also logged in to one of the, the Meet Echo systems uh, so that you're able to participate in those questions. Uh, I think this is a pretty standard agenda for a BOF in that we're going to go through uh, the charter. Uh, we'll then have discussion and then go through the BOF questions and time permitting. And if it still seems appropriate, uh, there's a technical presentation uh, which was volunteered. Uh, are there any questions on the agenda? Seeing none, here is the preview of the BOF question. So these are the questions that we'll be asking the community uh, after we've gone through the charter. Uh, so each of you, please, um, as you're considering the charter or changes you'd like to see in it or discussion about it, make sure that you keep in mind these questions. Does the community think that the problem statement is clear, well-scoped, solvable, and useful? Um, we will then ask uh, for folks willing to review the document or comment on the mailing list if a working group is formed. Um, we'll then ask if a working group should be formed. Uh, 
Uh, and then we'll ask anybody who doesn't think it should be formed if they want to address the BOF to express their concerns. Uh, so uh, those are the questions that you should have in mind as we go through the charter. Uh, the charter has been broken up into uh, uh, different sections uh, to go with the presentation style of PDF. Uh, for those of you who prefer to see it in a single sheet, uh, there's also a version in the meeting materials in that format if you prefer it. So uh, the first part of the charter reads, Media Overquick will develop a simple, low latency media delivery solution for ingest and distribution. This solution may address use cases including live streaming, gaming, and media conferencing, and will scale efficiently. The solution will support both web browsers and non-browser endpoints. The work focuses on building protocol mechanisms for publication of media and means to identify and receive uh, the media. The media publication protocol will be a push protocol for sending media, including audio, video, and timed metadata, such as closed captions and cue points. The common protocol for publishing media over ingest and distribution will support one or more media formats, an interoperable way to request media and encodings, rate adaptation strategies based on changing codec rates, changing chosen media encoding qualities, cache-friendly media mechanisms, the media to name and receive media will enable requesting the server start sending media related to a given point in the stream, selection of desired encoding, choosing language, bit rate, etc. Media will be mapped onto underlying quick mechanisms, quick streams, and or quick datagrams, and can be used over raw quick or web transport. The proposed solution will provide extensibility for supporting different media formats and shall specify a mandatory to implement media format to ensure interoperability. Support for multiple media types and media encodings shall be proposed. The solution will specify a simple method of authentication to access media, as well as a mechanism for carrying information enabling additional decryption of media payloads where required. The working group will define MOQ such that the media publication protocol can leverage coordinating relays, caches, or replication points wherever applicable to improve the delivery performance. Media will be encrypted, possibly end-to-end -end encrypted for certain use cases. The king mechanisms for media confidentiality is, however, outside the scope of this working group. Even when media is end-to-end -end encrypted, the relays can access metadata needed for caching, such as timestamps, making media forwarding decisions such as drop or delay under congestion, and so on. This working group will not propose changes to the underlying quick transport, but may propose requirements for quick extensions to the quick working group. This working group will not define signaling mechanisms for discovery of relay or media producers or consumers. This working group will coordinate with a quick and web transport working groups as needed. It will liaise with MPEG Dash, Dash Industry Forum, and the W3C web transport as appropriate. Here are the milestones currently proposed. Uh, working group adoption of protocol specification for common media publication protocol over quick. Working group adoption of protocol specification for datagram extension to media publication protocol over quick. Working group adoption of protocol specification for media subscription protocol over quick. Working group adoption of architecture specification for common media delivery protocol over quick. Working group adoption of use cases and requirements document for media delivery over quick and a decision about whether to forward to ISG for publication to be made later by working group consensus, each of which then uh, results in one being forwarded to the ISG. So that is a quick run through the charter. Uh, you should also all have the access to it in the meeting uh, materials if you wish to refer to it uh, directly. Uh, the queues are open for discussion. Please remember to use the meet echo queue to make sure that we have that correctly. All right, first up is Sanjay.
Hi, this is Sanjay Mishra. Uh, if, Ted, if you can go back to your uh, opening uh, description of the uh, charter. So the uh, second sentence here says, this solution may address use cases. My question is that shouldn't we be a little bit more uh, clear about it that the intent is to define use cases? So should we say shall or something more uh, persistent that you know we do plan to do something here than just saying may? Uh, so there's a little bit of discussion on the list. And the reason uh, that it's uh, worded this way at the moment is because uh, it may address use places, including. Uh, and so the including, may there may also be use cases which are not included, so it's not more definite than that. So if we want to make it more definite, we could update this to say, uh, may it address use cases which shall include at least, and then include these, um, uh, and then leave open what, what else is included. Would you prefer that wording? Sorry, I had walked away from the mic. Yes, I think that makes sense to me. OK, can I ask you to open a PR, or would you like one of us to do it? I can do it. OK, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Victor? Victor Vasily of Google. So one thing I just realized is uh, in uh, on the second slide uh, in common in the charter, uh, we say for push protocol, a way to request media, but request is fundamentally not a push operation. It's kind of a pull operation. So we might want to be more vague about what specifically we want the push protocol to do in terms of media format negotiation. Because it, as it stands right now, it makes it sound like. Huh? Even even close. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, remember the crosstalk okay. is not audible to the hybrid user, so please repeat uh, anything that's said directly there. Okay. Uh, is this better? Uh, so the. Uh, regarding on the second slide, there is the part where we say request encode media formats and encoding, uh, but request is a pool operation, which is probably uh, more complicated than something we want in a baseline push protocol, because often for push cases, I just have one format and I want to peer know what this format is, but I might not necessarily want to request or negotiate it. So I think we need to make the wording there uh, more uh, generic and uh, lower the requirements for the push protocol and or move parts of it to the mechanism to name and receive media. Thanks. So it sounds like push is making some implications for you. Um, and I guess uh, as the other folks come to the mic line, please consider whether there's a different phrase than push that captures what you believe the protocol um, uh, is likely to do. Because I, I do agree that there are some aspects of what's described here uh, that are not purely push protocol, but I think are intended to you know, ca cause a push to begin, so to speak. And uh, we may need a different phrase for that. Can I clarify? Uh, sorry, uh, I don't have objection to push. I think push is very good. I, it's more as a connotation to request that worry me. OK, thanks. Julius? Uh, hello. Uh, so uh, I think the intent here is to allow also to negotiate parameters such as SVC or simulcast. But uh, I'm wondering whether we should be explicit about it. I mean, is the charter currently written in such a way that people in the future might claim that negotiating the simulcast structure or negotiating SVC is out of scope? If people think that it is clear enough, then I'm fine with that. 
but I'm wondering whether that should be made explicit. Is that a question for someone in particular or to the room? No, no, it is a comment about the current charter. Okay. Saying Thanks. that I'm a little bit worried whether this is too restrictive or not. Okay, uh, Colin. Uh, Colin Jennings, Cisco. Uh, the, I think when we talk about the, the, the push, like one of the use cases, like on the ingest, you might only have one thing to push. But on the distribution sort of approach, like one of our very, one of our key use cases is be able to request bit streams at different, uh, you know, bit rates effectively at some level, right? That's a key fundamental part of this stuff. So I think the fact that though it is a push protocol does not mean there's no information flowing in the opposite direction telling something what to push. So I think we just need to phrase this in a way of, you know, there's some information, you know, you, you, you could say what you want pushed in some sort of way, right? And we sort of described in the outline here. So I just, I, I don't think people can take push protocol to mean that information only goes one direction. It, it's not like our congestion, our security, nothing would work with that. It's, it, it is, uh, there's a certain information you can indicate about what's, what's being pushed. Uh, to you. And sometimes there's only one thing to push, that's fine. But other times there might be a little bit of information that's like even the sort of correlating URI name of what which one, of what many streams a server might support that it needs to push to you. Thanks. So I, I think the text in the charter is pretty good right now. I just think that we we need to understand it to mean it in that context. Kyle? Kyle Rose Akamai. Is this thing on? Um, so I note that the charter says, um, or so far the draft charter says, uh, the solution may address use cases including live streaming, gaming, and media conferencing. These are very different use cases. It really feels like, I mean, so for instance, um, gaming is, uh, is something that wants to be low latency in one direction but doesn't require interactivity. Media conferencing is, requires interactivity, low latency interactivity in both directions. Live streaming can have an arbitrarily high hand wave latency depending on what's what is uh, acceptable to the to both customers and you know viewers and and content providers. It seems like one of the reasons why the quick working group was successful is they picked a particular use case which was HTTP and implemented that, and that seems like a better approach is like pick a single use case. And have other people in the room with future use cases that, you know, will basically say, okay, uh, let's let's make sure that whatever we do here doesn't preclude these future use cases, but just kind of scale it back a little bit rather than trying to boil the ocean. That's my two cents. Thanks, uh, Luke. Hi. Uh, going back to push versus pull really quickly. Um, I don't think the charter needs to specify push. I think it's. Um, if anything, it's a technical detail. Uh, we're trying to reduce latency and we're trying to make it simpler. But end of the day, two media endpoints need to coordinate. Um, you could feasibly have you know, the other end request. Uh, uh, and I, I think that there's a whole lot of uh, room there. And there's going to be debate in the future if you say push protocol. Like, is this technically a push protocol? But I said I want something. So I would just remove that from the charter, remove push versus pull, just it's a protocol for sending media. It doesn't matter who asks for the data. Thanks. Victor? Hello. Uh, I have one Hi. clarification question. So I am Emil from Orange. Oh, just next time, please remember to. Uh, Do you hear me? Yes, but just next time, remember to join the queue. OK. Uh, can you show the second slide? Yeah. Uh, uh, my name is Emil. I work for Orange. And you say the common protocol for publishing over ingest and distribution. Does it mean that uh, it will be the same protocol for, for ingesting the content and for distributing the content? I think that's the intention, yes. It's a requirement. OK, good. Thanks. Victor? Hello again. Uh, so to elaborate on push versus pull, uh, I think the fundamental s s distinction I'm trying to make here is that there is a part of the protocol that's responsible for getting media from one point to another. And like 
specifying how it's actually transferred. And then there is all of the negotiation and side channel. And to some extent, the reason we're trying to kind of draw the line between different drafts is that the part where you send media and the exact method uh, approach, it should be common regardless of what you're doing, but depending on your specific use case, uh, the actual things you will negotiate, et cetera, will be different. So for instance, requesting media makes sense in, if, in case you're, uh, okay, so, so sorry to say this, but the point I'm trying to make is the part we're trying to, sep I, I want to separate is, the part where the media gets transferred versus any control information. Thanks. Mo? Mo Zanati, Cisco. Um, I, I think I agree with Luke that the push versus pull is probably you know, not something that needs to be fleshed out in the charter. It's, uh, I don't think it's just a nuance. I think it is gonna be a lot more technical detail. And I think people have different ideas in the room. like what Victor calls push. I don't think um, some others would, would call push. Um, I think it's correct to have uh, the text about requesting, receivers requesting uh, in the charter. I think that, that makes sense. I don't think we should have something that says, you know, uh, uh, publishers push. I think that that goes too far and we need to uh, work in the, you know, work the details of what does it actually mean to, to publish? Is it a request from the server to, to tell you to go ahead, you know, you can start publishing? And do we want a symmetric protocol where it's the same, whether you're publishing or subscribing? It's a request and a response. And the response can be not immediate or synchronous, but long lived. It could, it could send you know, objects over seconds uh, in response to that request. I think those details need to be fleshed out in documents and not in the, in the charter. And one final point on uh, what Julius mentioned for uh, SBC and, and various encodings. I think the current text already captures rated that adaptation strategies with different codecs, codec rates, and qualities and encodings. I think that already captures um, all that we want for the different media formats that, that people are interested in. Uh, thank you. Bernard. Uh, yeah, I support Kyle's comment that this is boiling the ocean. Uh, the use cases that are described are extremely different. Um, and I think you sh my personal view is that the focus here should be on live streaming uh, which in particular, you know, needs the low latency, but also can benefit from caching. Um, and the gaming, some of the gaming use cases are extremely different. They don't use caching. Um, and and uh, conferencing is another whole whole problem of real-time conferencing. Um, so I, th I think it needs more focus. There's enough work in here for like three or four working groups. Thank you. Uh, Stefan? So two things. Uh, first, I support what Kyle and Bernard said. Um, I've said that before. Uh, the second thing is I'm, I'm worried about uh, specifying a mandatory uh, media format. Um, given the current political climate, I mean, realistically, the choice nowadays is between the VP9 AV1 world and the HVC VVC world for the video stuff. Um, that's scary right now. Uh, as those of us who listen in what's going on in DVB and W3C and places like that uh, have already experienced, yeah, it's entirely too many lawyers involved. I would suggest to remove this. I would, it, I know that interoperability is a high goal, blah, 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 but I would not go, it's way too painful. Thank you. Uh, who's next? Suhas. I'm audible. Yeah, we can hear you. Speak up just a bit. Okay, cool. Um, uh, I, I kind of wanted to touch, touch a bit upon the use cases and, uh, and you know, should we cover all this named use cases or not? So one of the main trends I see why mock was formed, um, even when we had something like a dash or um, CMA, uh, HLS, uh, was was an on the on one side was that some of the use cases that we are seeing is a trend where. Uh, use cases that involve uh, streaming and also data interactivity, they're combined. And, and we don't have a solution to support any, anything like that today. 
um, either one is very complicated or other is, is very latency to run and, uh, and cannot meet the interactive requirements. And that's true Sumas, for both streaming. Can you, can you slow down just a little bit? I'm having a hard time getting your words. OK, so I'll, I'll try it a uh, second take one. So uh, the point I was trying to say is that there's a lot of new use cases that's coming where uh, the, the streaming world is trying to move towards bringing in interactivity aspects. And, and, and the interactive world is trying to bring it to the scaling aspects. Uh, and, and that's driving the mock world. That, that's what way, way, way I fair, fair felt that the today's solutions, either the web RTC being complex on one side, or the, the existing low latency dash, or, uh, or the other streaming solutions, they are not able to meet the interactivity requirements. And most of the use cases that have been written there, they have a common theme of having uh, low latency and interactivity and scale. Uh, in common in, in there, can all, does all these need, use cases need caching? May may not, uh, but most of them do need uh, do do benefit by, from having caching. So uh, even though I do feel like it might be boiling the ocean, but there are only these things are need to be solved for today's and tomorrow's use cases. And hence a new working group and mock I think would be a good place for that. And on the push versus pull, it might be te te technical at this point in time, but. I, I tend to agree with what Victor was uh, pointing out, saying that regardless of how the media is asked, how the media is delivered should be common across both ingest and distribution side. Uh, if you want to use the word push or pull or a different terminology, that's totally fine. But we need to capture that aspect somewhere in the chapter. Thank you. OK, so uh, Alan and I have uh, discussed this a little bit in a side channel. And it, it seems like the discussion of whether the, the phrase push should be there is kind of rat holing a little bit. Um, and so uh, I think what we'd like to say as chairs is that we accept that this is a design decision to be made by the working group and that the exact phrasing uh, to describe the protocol could be uh, filigreed or something very different than push, but we're, we're going to set that aside, uh, functionally accept the PR that was just filed to remove the push from the charter uh, and, and move on to the more substantive discussions because that seems to be a bit of a rat hole. Uh, it doesn't seem to be a bit of a rat hole um, to talk about uh, how many uh, use cases we're, we're going to support. And so I think um, one of the things in the current charter is an attempt to identify uh, the, high, uh, the high value ones that are currently kind of active um, in, uh, in, in the industry at the moment, um, but leave the, um, the will support there to um, uh, to be a little bit uh, vaguer than that. And so I think it would be very useful if folks uh, could focus on whether um, picking one of these wouldn't have bad long-term consequences. Because I think in the, in the chat, it's been raised by a couple of people uh, that uh, it might be restrictive and then picking two might be better than one, picking three might be better than two. So I think uh, some additional discussion on that is probably needed. All right, thanks. Uh, let's see, uh, Sanjay. Hi, uh, this is Sanjay Mishra from Verizon. Um, I also have questions. As I was reading the charter, I also struggled with the, um, with the use cases um, that are so divergent in nature, each of those. So I think I agree that it makes sense to have a charter that basically scopes out all the relevant work that needs to be done. But I think it might be helpful once if the working group is formed that some discussion happens that sort of says, you know, what is the priority? Can we, can we take a live streaming use case as a first example of that working group will take on or versus, you know, a media conferencing or live streaming or live gaming? Because each of these are very different use cases and have their own different requirements in terms of what the latency really means and, and so, so forth. So I think it's probably worth looking at it that um, uh, there's some uh, prioritization made and uh, working group as a whole decides that this is the use case we want to work unless there are enough people that will work independently on each of these use cases, you know, which is really, really very wide. So I think it may be better to have, have one focus and then get that out of the way and then take the next use case and so on. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Jorg. Yeah, thanks. I, I just wanted to uh, second the point that Stefan made. I, personally, I don't care too much about... Can you get a little bit closer to the mic, please? <clears throat> personally, I, I wanted to second the point that Stefan made. Personally, I don't care too much about 
media encoding, but it seems to be hard to pick, uh, to agree on a single one. We had had issues with that before. And especially given the zoo of use cases that we currently have, it may not be even possible to pick something sensible that would make uh, would make it across all these cases beyond the uh, political stuff that, that Stefan pointed out. Thanks. Spencer. Okay, Spencer Dawkins. Um, I've got two things, but let me just focus on the one we're talking about for now. Um, the discussion about the use cases, um, I agree with, but I wanted to go a little bit further on that. Um, one of the questions I've asked on the mailing list was about uh, how we would, you know, whether there's a relationship between this and work in AVT core. Um, and the answer on the mailing list was there's not a relationship with ABT core. Um, especially if we're getting down to the interactive uh, use cases, um, I'm not sure, I'm not sure if, I'm not sure if I agree with that. I, you know, I mean, I'm just mostly asking if other people uh, are buying that. But that, that has a lot to, like I say, it has a lot to do with the use cases that are in scope. If the use cases that are in scope are uh, live, uh, live media use cases, um, I, I, think it is, I think it is clear that there's not a relationship or not a close relationship. But I think that if Mach is also targeting interactive uh, use cases, it's a lot harder to say that there's not one. Um, do, should I, there's people, there's people in line behind me, so I will stop there. Yeah, you're saying, Spencer, no, say more. Say what you want to change. What, so what, what should we change in the charter? What, make a suggestion. You haven't said anything. <laughs> I, I'm informed by Cullen behind me that I have not said anything yet. So uh, I, will, I, will, I will take a shot at uh, saying something, which is basically uh, the definition of the, uh, so like I say, the definition of the use cases uh, can or could point to live media as defined in the uh, mock requirements uh, draft, which is an individual draft and has no standing. But I'm saying it does have a definition for that in there that could be used to distinguish um, the use cases that are in scope. And that I'm not telling you that's the right answer. I'm telling you that that would be a concrete suggestion. That was concrete. Thanks, Spencer. It's Colin Jennings. Um, I, I sort of want to address this this use case thing. I think that the the people that have been working on this for the past, you know, couple of years and six months and having lots of conversations on this, you know, we sort of tried to think about, do we just want, the way we split up the different ways of splitting apart the work we're going to do, do we just do ingress or do we just do distribution or do we do both? Do both? And then the thing is, there's huge efficiency gains of what you want to do. And so you can look at that list of things and go, oh, wow, that's a wide list of use cases. They're very different. But what we do at IETF is try and create a single generic tool that's pretty simple. And I'll talk about what the tool is that this is creating here that covers multiple things. I mean, HTTP, you can use it for banking websites. You can use it for news websites. You can use it for gaming. I mean, you can even send, you know, machine calls over it. It's a generic tool. So the tool that we're trying to create here is a low latency, highly scalable video system. And, uh, we do both ingress and distribution because if you don't do both, you end up with mapping problems between the two. So that's the real incentive there. And we're not talking about creating different tools for all of those use cases. We're talking about creating one tool that sort of will meet to varying degrees each one of those use cases. And that tool is a low latency, uh, highly uh, scalable, simple sort of uh, video up and down system. And I, I don't think there's, you know, if you say, oh, we're only going to deal with, um, you know, one of those use cases, you end up with there's already better solutions in the marketplace for it. You could use WebRTC. You could go use HLS Dash. The thing is, when you want to combine these things together and have a unified tool and way of doing it, 
that's when you get to this work making sense. So I don't really care if people remove some of those use cases or whatever, that's not, we can remove all the use cases and, and mention of them from the charter. But the important thing to me is that the tool we're creating is going to end up being useful for all of those use cases, no matter what we say in this, right? Like that's, that's the tool we wanna to create here. So it's really important to me that we keep the scope of the work in the, in the charter that, you know, as it is, that we don't just try and great, greatly scope it down because it has no value if you take a smaller piece than this and people just, the people doing the work just aren't going to be willing to work on it. It's, it's, not, it's not a huge value thing. Um, and we need it to be common. We need it to meet a bunch of these use cases so that we can get the synergy of the different groups of people that all need to work on this to bring something together. So I think it really needs to proceed as it is. Thanks. Thank you, Kirill. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. Awesome. Um, I came to say almost the same thing that Colin said. So um, I, in terms of use cases, I think if we go with just like a live streaming use case, right? So it's very easy to, <laughs> there's already like Dash, HLS, all these different solutions that um, sort of works, right? So, but um, I think it's important to build a solution that works for different use cases. And we already see the, requirements even within live streaming there are use cases where latency of 10 seconds is fine uh, but there are requirements where latency of subsequent is, is needed for interactivity right so and like where do you draw the line where it's like yeah at, like at this latency you need a different protocol and it's also very difficult to build deploy and run the services if for every single like for, for, for very similar use cases you have to essentially use different protocols and different infrastructure. So having something um, that works uh, for variety of cases is, uh, would be very, very beneficial. And I understand that's definitely, it's a hard problem. Uh, hopefully we can at least solve, try to solve it. Um, the second point I want to like, related to charter phrasing, I, um, you know, I think in the beginning of the charter, there is a phrase about interoperable way to request median encodings. I have slight problem with wording request because I think it sort of implies that someone is asked, like that someone has to ask uh, about the uh, the quality, the encodings that are being sent. But I think it's important to support the cases where, like, for example, whoever is sending media can decide what the quality to send. So like basically what I'm talking about, the server, server server-driven uh, decisions versus client-driven decisions, and we need to support both. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Jonathan. Hi, Jonathan Rosenberg, 5.9. Uh, two comments. First, I uh, wanted to respond to Stefan Wenger and disagree. Uh, I do think we should make sure we produce something that has a minimum uh, mandatory codex. I think we are at the point now on the internet where we can do that, largely due to the very painful work that happened before that many of us went through, uh, Opus and AV1 being the result. Um, so that's comment number one. Comment number two on the wording on the charter, um, one thought uh, or possible suggestion is to think of this as a published subscribe system because the, where the publishing effectively takes care of the push and subscribe is on the receive side. I think if you frame it as publish subscribe, a lot of the problems that we need to address with the protocol become very clear. Naming and identification, uh, how you create and establish subscriptions, how you choose amongst formats, uh, or all the things, uh, buffering and retransmission, caching from the publisher, the subscriber, all become fairly clear and understood concepts. So I apologize. I've, I've, I did read the docs, but have not followed the list so recently, so that may have been discussed, but that's one suggestion. Thanks. Uh, Philip. Phil Hanbaker. Yeah, a uh, couple of ch uh, charter tweets. Could you go to slide number three? Well, the Charter 3, uh, where it says, um, shall specify mandatory to implement media format. I'd like to make that a may. And the reason for that is interoperability is a property of systems. And when I build systems, I really do not care what the mandatory to implement of Jose or PKCS7 or whatever I might be using is. When I build the system, that's the point at which I'm going to choose my mandatory to implement algorithms. And unless you've got a key exchange, you're not going to have interop anyway. So 
I don't want to have that argument here, but I'd like to defer it so that working group can have it. So if we make that in May, so that's the first uh, tweak I'd like to make. And then when we go to the, uh, where it mentions end-to-end -end encryption, I don't know which slide that's on, I'm afraid. I'd like to make that ends plural to ends. And I know that we're very big on end-to-end. -end. That doesn't work in security because it's not just Alice and Bob. And there's mention of these relay servers getting unencrypted metadata. I want to be able to encrypt it. And I want to have that in the first version of the spec rather than coming back for a BIS or a new charter group just to be able to encrypt the metadata which should have been encrypted all along. So I'd like the charter to recognize that there's a plurality of ends and the encryption mechanism should allow for that. Thanks, uh, Luke. Hi, Luke from Twitch. Um, so the first thing is media formats is a little vague, at least in the media world. I don't know if it's referring to a container or a codec. Um, definitely, there should be a mandatory container. But mandatory uh, codec is kind of a deal breaker for distribution, at least, because a lot of the times we don't have control over what it was encoded. Uh, and you end up just having lock-in. You know, you, you just force this one old codec to be used till the end of the day, uh, end of days. Uh, the second thing is um, for use cases, uh, real time's hard, uh, and WebRTC does a good job these days. Um, it's it's complicated, uh, but also trying to tackle real time ourselves is complicated. Uh, it might even be a bit of a scope creep. Um, the real use case, at least we see, uh, is interactive use cases where real time like conversational latency isn't required, but you have the ability to buffer more if needed on a viewer by viewer basis. Um, so it's really hard to talk about this and put it in the charter, but uh, I would focus more just on like interactive is the word. I think gaming and conferencing is just is kind of difficult, honestly. Um, but we definitely want to avoid the current situation where you have to pick a protocol per latency budget. Uh, it's, it's awful that one viewer has to get WebRTC because they need real time, and then somebody else needs to get HLS because they have a poor network. Um, so that's the big thing I think that we want to, want to solve is trying to spread out the use cases. Um, and unfortunately, that means tackling more areas. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, Leslie. Hi, uh, Leslie Nagel. And um, for the purposes of this, I'll just observe that I'm the co-chair of the MOPS working group. Um, I, I don't have an issue with the text of the charter per se, insofar as I think it does accurately and concretely describe the work that people have been working on this for a year would like to do. And I suspect that that work can be achieved, however, comma, I'm a little worried, particularly when Colin says we build general protocols uh, for a multiplicity of use cases and purposes, that the people who have been working on it for the last year aren't really the whole of the universe of people who are delivering video over IP. Um, I think there are some pretty significant audiences not represented in the room. And that's OK, as long as you understand that. and as long as we don't, in a year's time or two years' time, say, well, now we have the ultimate media transport over quick, and anybody who wants to do any delivery over, over IP, any, any video delivery over IP, have to use this protocol, even if it wasn't designed for your use cases. The um, first, first few lines of the charter of the MOPS working group, internet-wide and within domain IP delivered media is widespread, leading to significant technology developments across industries not traditionally thought of as internet technology developers or operators, as well as considerable quantities of traffic on local and transit networks. Um, so we spent a couple of years trying to attract some of those audiences into the IETF. And, uh, and uh, I think that what we really need here is to make sure that MOP doesn't continue forward, ignorant of the existence of MOPs and uh, un doing unlinked work. So we're MOPs, we're here to help. 
let me just maybe pause and, and ask. I, I see there are a lot of people in this room and online, so and are, but I don't know who shows up to MOPS. So do you feel like there some at least the MOPS people are here? Are you here? There are certainly some MOPS people here, and that's a good thing. TM. Uh, however, comma again, damn commas. Um, however, we're we're actually trying to draw more people from the SBA, CTA, other organizations into the IETF in general. So you know we can help be a conduit, if you will. But just don't don't suffer from the closed world assumption and think that that everything that uh, all all necessary opinions have been represented. Thanks, uh, Leslie. Could you add a PR to add MOP to the list of the working group we'll we'll coordinate with? I see a thumbs up. I think. Okay. Okay. Uh, Magnus. Yeah, Magnus Westlund Eriksson. I want to talk about the media format. I probably partly to blame for some of this formulation because I think I fostered a view in some discussions with the proponents here at the last meeting. And my intention was really, and I've, I've, from my perspective, it is we're talking about ISO-based media files, CMAS, or things like that, or potentially are you using RTP payloads in general with some metadata around this to make it work? But I kind can you see that probably should soften the wording here about, because it does depend on the usage, where you deploy it, et cetera. And, and there are also a few different cases here which might have different choices on how they want to use it. So, but it's definitely, I mean, the general aspect of, of you need to take the media formats into account in this work is clear. And I think it's crucial to ensure that multiple can be supported. Okay, thanks, Ecker. Uh, a few points. Um, uh, I agree with Luke that it's important to specify whether this is really for, you know, this is for video conferencing type applications or for streaming applications. They're, they are different. Um, and I understand JDR's point that they kind of shade in each other, but like they're different. Um, so knowing what we're targeting is important. Um, I'm, I've went through the text on this about encryption and I find it extraordinarily puzzling. Um, so first of all, Quick is always encrypted and Quick has its own keying, keying exchange. And so I don't understand like what any of this text really means. It appears to be something about an end encryption on top of quick, um, but um, it like, needs some major revisions to actually say something that like, like people can understand. Um, so um, I also don't understand really what a simple method of authentication to access media is or for enabling additional decryption. So um, perhaps someone can fix that stuff, but um, I think the target needs to be, I'm, and maybe it's all, and um, I'm not saying that like structurally what he's being proposed to do is fine because I don't understand it, but I'm saying that I do not understand it. And that's problematic. Um, and finally, um, please do not write ends to ends. Nobody knows what that means. Uh, okay, thanks, Omer. Hello, <clears throat> Omer Shapiro, Apple, now Apple. Uh, I'm a little bit confused with the with the being uh, cache friendly and also working on a raw quick um, uh, or web transport because uh, it uh, it occurs to me that uh, large scale caching implies uh, the use of HTTP. So uh, what I'm trying to say is that this charter seems like a superset of a few uh, things that may not necessarily work all the time together. And maybe it's worth uh, clarifying the intention. Is this the case of working group that will oversee several solutions that do not will not work together? Or is the intent to actually try to uh, make, uh, make it possible to cache real quick? Uh, so this is my comment. It's a comment for clarification. It's not a technical comment of, hey, this needs to be done, just for clarification of intent. OK, I, I think if, if you asked, is the intention to cache raw quick, I don't think that's necessarily the, the goal. But maybe somebody who's closer to caching or has thought about the text about relays and caches and cache friendliness can talk about maybe what that means a little bit more and how it relates to HTTP. Colin. Uh, Colin Joyce, let me just speak to uh, both. both the previous two speakers uh, questions there and see, see if I can answer them. So uh, I'm gonna start with the, the security stuff. 
um, um, Ecker point well taken that needs to be clarified in here, but I think that the, the proponents of this BOF have a, a fairly clear understanding of what we mean, and let me try and explain what that is, and then we can try and work to get the charter to reflect that. Um, certainly, uh, to put this in HTTP terms, yes, all the connections are fully quick, normal interpreted to, to the, like, just like HTTP is encrypted to the CDN, it's exactly the same. But we don't want, we want to have optionally the ability to inside of what's being tripped, so that's hop by hop encryption between the client and the CDN, or the client and the server if there is no CDN, and then from the server back down to the other receiving client is also, that's all encrypted. So what the end to end talking here is about is the data inside of that can also be optionally encrypted. So some things wouldn't do it. But the intention is to um, use MLS to key it uh, and, and to be able to encrypt the blocks there. And the metadata, which is always a bad word, there has to be some envelope data that is authenticated but not encrypted that tells you like time to live, what the data is, its destination, who it's going to. So I think that that's reasonably, like maybe, I'm not saying people agree on exactly the details of what the metadata is or anything, but the idea that we would optionally be able to take the media for some of the use cases and end-to-end -end encrypt it. I think it's really critical to some of the use cases. Um, and the, the, the way that that might be done might be completely different depending on whether you're talking about distributing you know, DRM encrypted video or anything else. And it's out of scope of this, of this working group other than to have a placeholder to be able to do that type of stuff and an architecture that enabled those types of use cases for, for the people that wanted it. So I hope that clarifies that one a little bit. Um, <clears throat> on the caching, um, the, no, the, the, the intention is, is not that you could use existing HTTP ZDNs, but that we uh, there, there are CDN providers, they're aware of this work and have looked at the idea of uh, building something that was compatible with a protocol that came out of this working group that was very media specific and very similar to what they already do with quick HTTP CDNs to be able to you know, terminate the quick connection, grab the data in it, cache it and do uh, w whatever was needed by the, the, the work that was done out of this. So it's well, I think when we say cash friendly, I mean, that's a completely vague term. What does that even mean, right? It's hard. But I think what people are imagining is uh, a protocol that was designed from the beginning to enable people to build caches for deployments that want that type of thing. There's certainly deployments that don't need that. There's deployments that have completely their own caching network and everything. And it's not defining how caches talk to each other. Anything. It's just designing the protocol to work here such that uh, caches can be used, you can build a, a cache type environment if you want to. I think that's what people, what the proponents of this were largely thinking. Thank you, Spencer. Uh, Spencer Dawkins. I actually got up here to say something uh, unrelated, but I do want to agree with Cullen there. Uh, I, think, I, I, think that's the, I think that's the right attitude to uh, have when we're talking about the charter. And the charter, it, talk, it says uh, basically signaling for uh, location of basically everything um, is, you know, the working group would not, de not do, define anything there. Uh, I wonder if there are any constraints about how this, any constraints on this protocol based on how people expect to be able to find uh, sources and sinks and relays and stuff like that. Uh, if people have something clearly in mind that, that would, you know, that's, that's cool, but um, I just, you know, if we're trying to talk about interoperability, I'm a little concerned about that. Thank you. Spencer, can you clarify what kinds of constraints you think might exist in people's minds? I, so, ba so basically, basically, as I read the charter, if you, if you wanted to have an interoperable solution, using this, uh, there's no guidance from this charter about how we expect this protocol to be used at, at a minimum in recognizing that, you know, anybody can do anything to locate anything in their special case. But, you know, do, 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 we, want, do we have at least one thing in mind that people could use to, uh, to locate the things that they need to locate and the reason I mention that probably is because I would expect the next conversation we have to be about privacy concerns for senders and receivers. And you know, it's like the best, the best way for privacy concerns to be resolved is that senders and receivers can't find each other. So you know, that's probably not the goal. Okay, thanks. 
Victor. Uh, I was going to comment on the media format thing. So as far as I remember, the, this was originally fra phrased as media containers instead of media formats. Uh, and then uh, there were sufficiently many people upset with phrase containers that were replaced it with format. Uh, regarding mandatory to implement, uh, I personally find that in practice, the requirements to support a certain format or, or algorithm are in reality fairly toothless because if the parties support different format as the protocol supports it, they will use a different format even if they don't support the MTI format. Uh, I think the message here is that the working group just should decide, uh, define one format we expect people to use. Uh, not necessarily that everyone will use it, or not necessarily that we expect people to even use it within five years after it's standardized. Okay, thanks. Ecker. So I think Victor's point first. Um, I did not expect there to be, uh, I'm trying to find this text now, but I didn't read that text um, as being mandatory to use format. I interpret it as mandatory implement format, just like VP8 and 264 for WebRTC. Um, and I do think those are useful. I think this great interoperability. And I think we have, um, uh, you know, MT mandatory implement is exactly what the text I was expecting to see. So I think this is a very useful and I think we, it's a good, good idea. Um, as for the encryption, thank you, Colin. That was very helpful. Um, um, I guess um, two points about, so um, I'd be happy to work with you, make the interpreter say that. Um, two points, I would be happier if it said it will always be end-to-end -end encrypted, um, but maybe we can argue about that outside the charter. Um, um, second, um, I'm still a little unclear about, and I obviously understand why you'd want to have um, uh, some metadata in the clear for, you know, for, for thing, really, the way to do things. We talked about that in SRTP as well. Um, but um, authenticating that is actually quite a tricky problem. So I think we may have to understand what that means a little better to, understand, to be able to talk about that. Um, it's like an SRTP, right? The, um, the metadata is in the clear and it's authenticated end to end, but it can't be verified by people who know the cryptographic keys. And maybe that's what you want. Maybe it's not what you want, but we should be clear what we're trying to say. Thanks. Okay, uh, before we go on in the queue, I, I want to, to, to make a proposal here based on what we've heard so far. Uh, what the charter draft text currently says, shall specify a mandatory to implement media format to insurance interoperability. I think we've had several people come up and say that the breadth of use cases makes that um, difficult to imagine actually working. And what I propose is that we adjust this to say, may specify a mandatory to implement media uh, format for specific use cases to ensure interoperability for those use cases. And I think what that gives us is to say, if we see a use case, where mandatory to implement is gonna uh, advance interoperability, the working group can then go, go forward and select one that's appropriate to that use case. Um, but it is not trying to say any particular media format is gonna cover the full gamut. Um, so uh, uh, Eric has said uh, in chat that he would prefer the opposite an MTI, which can be overridden in specific use cases. Uh, I think those are functionally the same. Uh, so if you want to write a PR that says it that way and uh, put it against uh, uh, the um, uh, the charter, that would be great. Okay, okay. thanks, Ted. Uh, Bernard. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd like to uh, echo Ecker's earlier uh, concerns about the words end-to-end -end encryption. I think media encryption might make more sense because I don't think you're trying to say that you're going to encrypt all the way from the ingester uh, to the endpoint that you would preclude transcoding. So uh, I think you, what you're really trying to do is encrypt the media. Um, and depending on the scenario, the ends may differ. So. Okay. Thanks. No. I'm um, Ozanati Cisco. Um, if uh, on the mandatory formats, uh, it, if we are if we are actually going to rehash the the codec wars as uh, as part of this work, let's let's get an IETF scheduled in Honolulu uh, in the next year or two, <laughs> because that seems to be the only way to resolve it. I'll have to do get Ted to do one of his chants again um, to get everybody calm and mellow. Um, but on on the mandatory formats, I think uh, it's important for people to realize that uh, 
trying to make an exception for some use cases or, um, or having text which says, this is mandatory only in this use case. I don't think anything in the protocol will actually ever be able to distinguish the use cases. I'm not imagining any protocol bits or semantics that would actually tell someone this is live streaming or this is interactive or this is VOD. So I'm kind of at a loss of how a publisher or subscriber would even know that this is gonna be mandatory in this context or not. So while I think it's well-intentioned to limit the mandatory formats to some use case, I don't think it's practically feasible to, to do that. Um, and I think having a fallback that everybody always implements is becoming possibly less and less relevant over time, especially if you try to use a fallback like WebRTC did that's most likely to be ancient by the time that, that this protocol you know, sees widespread adoption. So if we had VP8 and H.264 in there, I'd be very sad as those <laughs> mandatory uh, to implement formats. So I don't think we should copy uh, prior charters on, on that. Um, softening the language to just say may choose a mandatory format, I think uh, you know, may get us further down the road, um, but I would not add the text that Ted suggested about specific use cases because I don't think that's gonna be feasible to implement. And then one point on the security is I, I agree with Ecker that reading the charter now um, with uh, fresh eyes, it's very confusing. It doesn't really convey what people that were working on this for a while have already had in the back of their heads that Colin suggested. Um, so really everything that is done by Quick, we should explicitly say it in the charter that media will be in encrypted per Quick, but there will optionally also be an end-to-end -end encryption and the protocol is not doing that. I think it's clear to specify that we are not specifying any of the protocol, not just the, not just the keying, but the actual use of those keys to encrypt media. Mock is not involved in any of that. But what is important is to identify, the protocol needs to be able to identify what is end -end encrypted and what the context is for that. You know, how do you know, where do you get the DRM keys or end-to-end -end keys for that? I think that's important to specify. That's really what the protocol is gonna do, is identify that some things are end-to-end -end encrypted and what the context is for that encryption. Um, and that there is a separate uh, context for transport metadata that We'll, 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 the relays will have access to. So I think those are the important things to get out in the charter. Thank you. Uh, Sanjay. Sanjay Mishra here. Um, I just wanted to respond back to uh, what Colin was saying earlier on the use cases. So I think, I, I don't think there's any, um, qualms about use cases and, and charter is the right place to have all those, to, to be able to call out that uh, MOQ mock will support these use cases. I think the question is that each of the use cases have to be looked differently. For example, that for live streaming, really caching is not really something that you would do, but you know, maybe for VOD, that would make sense to do that. Um, the, the common denominator, of course, is that each of, these product, each of these applications will benefit with the low latency. So low latency applies universally, but there are other parameters, you know, for example, caching will not apply to live streaming. So I think that, that really the point is that these are all valid use cases that should be addressed and this is the right forum to do that. It's just a question of, you know, how do you prioritize of those use cases that you would wanna work on in a way that one is not stepping over the other in terms of conflicting with what you need to do with the live streaming versus uh, video streaming case, et cetera. So that was the point. Thank you. Thanks. Luke. Hi, it's Luke from Twitch again. Um, so with mandatory formats, um, one of the things that comes up on the distribution side is caching. If we have a thousand people watching a stream, we, we want them to all watch the same format. Uh, we don't want to have this case where we have two people have this legacy format that the initial draft specified. Uh, to not like invoke flame wars, you could imagine if the draft said you must support GIF. Um, but in the future, we're all using PNGs. You don't want one person using an old client to request a GIF and force a new encoding and uh, spin up a new encoder and then force you to have a new cache. So I don't, at least for the broadcasting side, you can make a case for mandatory formats. It mu you must support this codec. But at least on the distribution side, it's we, we want just one. It's too expensive to support multiple ones uh, in a lot of cases. And we don't want to leave it up to the, uh, the viewer to decide if they want to make it expensive for us. Um, so 
The mandatory for some use cases, I think, is just toothless. Like, there's no point saying that. Uh, if you can just opt out of it by saying, I'm not that use case. Um, so I would just leave it in the air. Like, we have codecs, unfortunately, people aren't going to come to a consensus anytime soon. So we should not try to force that. OK, thanks. Stefan. So again, on, on the same topic, um, use case is not necessary, does not necessarily only have a technical dimension. So for example, um, broadcast distribution in China, where my employer sits, uh, is when it comes to codex selection, fundamentally di different from uh, broadcast distribution in the US, as an example, right? In, uh, so trying to mandate a codec that uh, folks over, say, in China are supposed to implement uh, if they want to comply and with, with our uh, technology as specified here is, is a last case. That simple, right? Um, don't do it. Just don't do it. It's too difficult for this organization. Uh, okay. Thanks, uh, Philip. Sorry, we got some stale queue entries here. Yeah, uh, a bit more, Phil Hambake, a bit more charter bashing. Uh, it's saying the working group will define. Uh, is a will a may or a shall? So I, I, where it comes to media will be encrypted. So what I'd like to do there is Media shall be encrypted. Metadata may be encrypted. Media may be end-to-end -end encrypted for certain use cases. In the, what I'm wanting is to make sure that I'm going to be able to encrypt my metadata between the endpoints that make sense for me and not have a second working group have to spin up like happened with WebRTC. So I want that, that, that's why I want to have that in the charter. I mean, I, yeah, we don't need to call it ends, two ends or whatever. And I think that's, you know, there's some wordsmithing that can go into the rest of the thing because uh, I don't think you need the however outside the work, scope of the working group. And so it's a bit chatty. Uh, thank you. I would encourage you to open a PR, uh, see if you have specific suggestions. And that kind of goes for a lot of folks, I think, maybe have some things. But yeah, feel free to jump in and, uh, and contribute specific language where we can have a discussion. Uh, next up, Spencer. Spencer Dawkins, and I'm counting on Cullen to tell me if I'm saying something. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so we've had a uh, discussion a bit on the mailing list, I think, uh, most recently um, with uh, ab about metadata not being monolithic, that some metadata is, as we've talked about it, is helpful for uh, relays and things like that to figure out how to, how to best forward uh, packets and things like that. And other metadata is not that. Uh, so uh, I don't know, you know, I don't know that we've, I don't know that we've conversed enough in discussions to be able to explain uh, that in proposed charter text. But I think that's important for us to keep in mind when we're having the discussion is that some of the metadata is going to be different from other metadata and for us to be able to figure out a way to describe that difference um, in a, you know, in a meaningful way, because I think that is something that's important to keep in mind. Um, so my second question is actually uh, just making sure I understand. So you all want to see proposals for change text as PRs in the repo for the charter? I, I guess if someone had specific uh, changes or particularly grammar or things like it reads wordy, uh, it's probably easier for that person to, to open a PR. Uh, if it's maybe maybe starting with an issue, uh, and since not everyone's following the repo uh, for also copying the list, maybe not be a bad idea. So, um, and I, I would observe that the mail, the mock mailing list uh, does get the weekly summaries oh, right. from the repo. Uh, so for people to keep an eye on that. Um, 
I'm not telling uh, you that we sorry. talked about things that were, I'm sorry, go ahead, Ted. Uh, I was just gonna say one of the reasons I was asking for it just now was uh, I may be able to then show the PR to the to the group by sharing my screen a little bit later. Um, but I think we, we haven't quite got to that part in the discussion yet. Okay, uh, and 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 th th thank you. Yeah, anything anything that will help me not submit some random piece of text that you guys have to merge in at you know at some level. Uh, I would like to help you all be uh, co-chairs. Um, but uh, so the the other thing is uh, if you if you all wanted to give guidance that uh, if you're changing text, uh, you know saying you know, say it this way, that that's a, that's a reasonable candidate for a PR. But uh, if you're saying we should be doing something different, and I would say like the, uh, you know, my early, earlier suggestion about using the definition of live media uh, from, from an individual draft, uh, that that might be more, uh, more useful to have that discussion on the mailing list so that it can converge and uh, the people do, do not have to try and figure out what to do with the competing PRs. I, I just want uh, to sorry. sorry, go ahead, Alan. I just wanted to respond to one thing Spencer said at the beginning, which was about um, metadata and that there was some attempt in the charter to, to at least clarify the kinds of metadata that would be useful for transport relays and, and whatnot. And, but I, I think I heard you say you wanted more description or distinction distinguishing the kinds of metadata that wouldn't be available or that would be something for the working group to to hash out uh this is spencer again so uh conveniently still in queue the uh, the thing i was trying to say was for and maybe the answer is that the uh, Charter recognizes that metadata is not monolithic and that the, you know, a working group responsibility will be to figure out what kind, you know, how to treat different kinds of metadata for different reasons. I, I would be, I would be happy with that. But, you know, other people can okay. do the right thing also. Thank you for clarifying. Uh, uh, Ted, you wanted to say something? Uh, yeah, so uh, we, Ellen and I were kind of going uh, in the side channel to, to talk a little bit about how we're going to handle the mandatory to implement media format discussion. And it occurred to us that it might be good to get a sense of the room, obviously, that we've had some good comments at the, at the mic. But what we're going to do is uh, use the show of hand tool. Uh, the question that will be in the show of hand tool is the charter should specify a mandatory to implement media format, either on a use case specific basis or generally. Raising your hand would be a yes to this, and uh, choosing not to raise your hand in the tool uh, would be a no. The session is starting now. Yeah, uh, Ted, I don't know if you can extend the amount of time here, but the sounds like some folks in the room uh, lost the connection. Uh, and mine's been very unstable as well. So is I don't think it will I don't think it will end until I end it manually, at least at the moment. Uh, okay. Can I get an like an actual show of hands for people who cannot get to the show of hands tool? Okay, it looks like about five or six folks. For uh, what? You need to ask the opposite of that too, though. The people who can't get to the do not raise hands tool oh. need to not raise their <laughs> hands by raising their hand. <laughs> okay, we don't seem to be getting a lot more. So through the tool, what I see is... Um, uh, do not raise hand 63, raise hand 20. Uh, that's clearly not a consensus in, in either direction, but it is definitely trending toward uh, uh, concern toward specifying a mandatory to, uh, to implement media format. 
So I think um, what we probably need to do here is to think if there's something else that that reaches us for that interoperability, that's the desired goal of that uh, mandatory to implement format, um, but perhaps doesn't use uh, that particular method. So I think we'll take that um, as something that would be continued work on crafting the charter. Uh, let's go back to the queue. Sorry, go ahead. Colin uh, I, I, I was probably just confused, but I may not be the only person in the room. It, we, you were hard on your, your mic's really over loud, and I actually took your question to be about mandatory to implement codex, not formats, when you ran that poll. But you know, my mistake. Um, anyway, I may not have been the only one confused. Uh, it does seem like on the the mandatory and the codex people were sort of it seemed to me that many people were speaking towards don't bother with them or if you do bother with them they won't mean anything anyway um so i'm fine with that type of charter change i don't, I don't think things so. i wanted to come back to the metadata for a minute because i think that that's the other one and uh i my my strong belief is the only thing that should go in this not encrypted stuff is stuff that the protocol mandatorily won't work with if you encrypted it, right? There should be nothing that you could encrypt that you don't encrypt um, for the Indian encryption type stuff. It, so we're talking about the, you know, it, it, to put this in IP terms, it's be like you can't encrypt the destination IP address. Like the, the network can't function if you do that, right? And this is the same thing. What is the absolute stuff that the caches have to be able to see or the, the, the middle servers need to be able to, the, the server needs to be able to see so that it can make the right decisions about uh, what to forward next, what media to flow, uh, congestion control, those types of things. There should be nothing else. I, 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 Thought we had tried to make that clear in the charter. Uh, I, I I regret using the word meta. I, you know, I wish we hadn't used metadata there, but I think that we need to try and phrase it in that type of form. That you know there will be some data that when you're using it in the encryption, there'll be some data that's only authenticated, and that authenticated data will only include stuff that's absolutely necessary for the functioning of the protocol. Um, and and I think that that would resolve a bunch of PHP's concerns and is better aligned to what many people in the working group thought it meant in the first place. Uh, and it's not just some vague envelope where all kinds of like privacy creepy stuff can be set. Thanks. Thank you, Ecker. Yeah, I, I think that'd be a fine suggestion from Colin, though I suspect we'll find this thing isn't extensible and then all kinds of creepy privacy stuff can be sent in it. Um, um, so Richard Barnes and I independently produced two PRs that attempt to like encode this discussion about um, encryption. I think either would be fine. Um, so uh, please take a look. Those are 59 and 60. Um, probably 60, which is his, is a little stronger. Um, I'm still, I think, a little confused about the um, uh, the, the the text um, about. Uh, I'm sorry. Can can we have that? The the um, the thing about the authentication of um, uh, of clients for access. I think, I think maybe the next slide. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Here we go. So this last, this last. So I think this first um, sentence I tried to. Re I'll, I, I, I'm trying to rewrite um, about because uh, I think it just means um, a way to demonstrate that the relay you should get the get the media or media way to demonstrate the relay that you should be enabled to ingest media. Um, so that seems easy, um, and I can fix that. But I don't understand what the stuff after the comma means. Um, and so maybe someone could tell me what the stuff after the comma means, and then we could write the text so it says that. Uh, okay, thanks. Suhas. I had uh, notes um, on, on the transport metadata, on the metadata, which is very similar to what Colin's. Um, I, I kind of just want to echo that. Um, and, and, and if you can make it clear that it's more more of a metadata for things in the middle that do not want to access media or don't need to access media but want to work on it uh, to make the decisions to forward or drop, react to condition control, we need to help. Uh, because that's the only way we can make these relays to be really cashable and also uh, performant and scalable as well. Uh, and on the thing about uh, relay discovery, uh, I, and I, I personally feel that that kind of should be outside the scope of this working group. Maybe an architecture document could specify uh, some of some of the uh, like informal ways to do that. But uh, we, the working group itself, should not uh, take to define mechanisms to do that. Uh, okay, uh, Alyssa. 
Alyssa Cooper. Um, I was just uh, reflecting a little bit about the relationship between the WebRTC charter and what happened in WebRTC uh, with the codex situation to try to think about this in that frame. And, um, you know, we ended up with different requirements for different kinds of endpoints, WebRTC browser, WebRTC non-browser, and uh, WebRTC compatible something or other endpoint. <laughs> and um, I was just wondering if thinking about that, thinking about it from the client perspective um, might cut through this a little bit because it sounded like when Luke was talking, it's it's really about the si difference between a situation where you want the node serving the media to be able to dictate uh, what the format should be. And it's acceptable to have a loss of interoperability. Um, whereas other situations where it's very important to be able to have that authority live with the clients um, that you'll you'll cut out a lot of um, opportunity for independent clients to be part of the ecosystem if there isn't um, a baseline specified. And so maybe that's a way to, I, I find the concept of doing it on a use case by use case basis um, a little bit uh, unsatisfactory, but I still do think that you need to have common baselines in some of these cases. So maybe that's a way to cut through it. But then I was also thinking that had we specified, tried to specify these categories of clients in the WebRTC case ahead of time, that never would have happened because uh, it took like many years to come to that sort of compromise. So I feel like you need something in the charter that's generic enough to capture this, but doesn't overly specify all the different subsets with different requirements. Thanks. Just a note, we're gonna cut the queue soon. Uh, so if you have something you wanna say, uh, please get yourself in the queue. Uh, Mozanetti, I, I think Alyssa made a good point about um, the different uh, device types rather than use cases. And what may not be clear in the charter is there's clearly two different device types. There's subscribers and publishers. That's like one type of device. And there's, or entity, let's not say device. And then there's servers, relays, and caches, which for the most part should not know or care what the media formats are if we do our job right. It's just a transport protocol. It's not actually going to operate on any of the media. So it shouldn't require the end-to-end -end keys. It shouldn't require knowledge of the formats and all of that. So I think it may be useful to, uh, if there's going to be something mandatory uh, to implement in codec formats, it should only impact the subscribers and publishers and not anything else in the chain. Um, and on, on the in, in encryption, um, I think uh, uh, th th there was a suggestion that I put on the mailing list about explicitly defining naming the word transport metadata as what the protocol operates on and can see and access. Um, and we may not, we we'll probably, probably won't be able to describe it in detail in the charter. I think it's going to be something for future work in the actual you know, documents that come out. But I think it may be useful to have something in the charter to nail the concept of transport metadata that is accessible to the relays. I think right now it just says, um, uh, a, a method of you know of accessing some data such as and it gives examples. I think just having a word for it, transport metadata, and then all all, all other data besides that, be it content or metadata, can be optionally and encrypted. But we still need to indicate where that where that's taking place. The protocol needs to specify where that end to end uh, encryption is taking place, and not just have it publishers and subscribers know this is DRM content and this is not DRM content, and then. I think we also need to have some people that um, liaise with uh, the, the MPEG forms about common encryption because there's been a lot of work done uh, among publishers and device makers to uh, not have to uh, have multiple formats and MPEG common encryption may be useful for that. And that may be something that we can, um, we can leverage in this, in this work too. Okay, thanks. Victor. Uh, Victor Vasily for Google, uh, two things. First, to the point that uh, if we do our job right, the uh, transport should not be aware about format. I am not entirely sure that is the case because part of uh, the goals of Mark is to be able to intelligently choose one to drop uh, 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 give us selected chunks of media, so uh, that pretty much implies, that might imply that we need to have a more advanced knowledge of uh, 
what's actually in the media than being a mere transport. Uh, my the, uh, second point I wanted to make is regarding simple method of authentication. That's never a good wording because whenever I think of something simple method of authentication, I think of something like stun. Uh, it is, oh, yes, encrypted with MD5. Uh, uh, we might want to just leave this out of the charter and leave it as an extension. Okay, thanks. Eric. On the, on the topic of caching and, as well as whether um, intermediates need to be able to view content, I think one thing that's really worth keeping in mind is that there's a live and on demand are not the only things that a lot of, uh, for many of the use cases, kind of the semi live and DVR style um, um, use cases where people can go back and be watching live slightly delayed or rewind a little bit, uh, play very heavily into this. So a lot of these systems end up being one where, where there's a very blurry line between um, live, live, semi live DVR and, and on demand and um, how that fits into caching and how that fits into middle boxes um, is something that we'll want to need to figure out early on if we want to be able to handle those use cases if, um, or versus purely being a transport. Okay, thanks. I think Ted's gonna go through some uh, PRs. Yeah. Okay, uh, so thanks everybody. There were a lot of good suggestions for uh, updates to the charter during the course of today's discussion. It's good to see so much energy uh, in uh, the queue, whether it's uh, remote or um, uh, in, in the room. Uh, there were a couple filed here, and I believe um, two of them kind of overlap. I'm, I'm going to show uh, uh, 60 rather than 59 based on some comments in the chat. Um, but I'm just gonna go through these very quickly. Uh, if you have like very, very serious heartburn, please add yourself to the queue to, to let us know what that is. Um, but just to let you know what the proposals discussed were. So this was just um, uh, making this more general to, to add or other mechanism. Uh, this one, as I believe we discussed, was to remove push from around protocol, and I'm not even going to click through that since it's a deletion of a single word. Uh, this one, as we discussed, was to add MOPS to the working group coordination list. Uh, again, that's a, a very quick one. And this is the, the more complex one. Uh, that updates the, um, the encryption discussion. I'll give folks a minute to read that. Okay, uh, is there anybody with serious heartburn who needs to join the queue to tell us why these uh, PRs should not be accepted? I don't see anybody in the queue here or online. Uh, so Betchett said that the left side of the room can't see it. Uh, okay, so, and Eric wants me to click the files changed tab so all the changes roll together. Uh, let's see here. I think I have to move out of that. So that would be the first change.
Okay, uh, so I think what that uh, is telling us is that at the end of this meeting, we'll, we'll be accepting those PRs uh, and we'll now go on to, uh, to ask some of the questions that are the BOF questions. So I'm gonna stop the screen share now, but uh, as you'll see in the chat, uh, there is a, a link to the, the polls and uh, a related set of things. Sorry, uh, uh, looks like- Yeah, Colin, Colin jumped up and just I, got I, in the queue. Just, uh, uh, Ted, there was one more PR that came in from Ecker that looks quite good to me while you were doing that. So maybe we could just do that one as well. Uh, okay, let me look for that. Uh, thanks to people who want to take a quick look at this. And again, the same applies if you see a need uh, to leap into the into the queue to tell us why this is wrong, please do so. Okay, I don't see anybody uh, leaping into the queue there either. Once again, these are, of course, all uh, uh, on the GitHub repo, and we can uh, encourage people to uh, file comments there uh, if if you don't have a chance to do the comments here in the room. Okay, we're now going to move on to the um, uh, the BOF questions. Give give me a, a chance here to start the show of hands tool. Okay, apologies. Uh, I seem to have closed the window where I had all of these uh, locked up, so it'll take me just a second. Uh, talk amongst yourselves. So in case anyone missed it, the poll is up. Okay, I've now discovered that you cannot actually unmute yourself once you've started a poll. Uh, thank you to whoever it was that actually said the poll is up now. Um, 
so Spencer, as is clear in one of the later um, ones, uh, when we talk about the problem statement, we mean after, after the discussion in the room. Uh, that's uh, also clear when we, we'll start talking about the charter. So give us a second for the next BOF question. Okay, the poll appears to be up. Okay, uh, I haven't seen any additional entries in, uh, oh, one just came in, two, two just came in. We'll give it another uh, 30 seconds then. We can all just, also just hum in the room if we like humming. Just sort of a hmm. <laughs> Come on, you miss the hums, you know you do. Okay, I, I think it's probably okay to end the session now, so I'm going to do so. Oh, no, still a couple slinking in. Um, all right, so that was 62 uh, folks raised their hand that they were willing uh, to review documents or comment on the mailing list if a working group should be formed. Uh, nine people uh, deliberately did not uh, raised their hand, indicating they would not be willing. And I'll point out that there are 152 people uh, in uh, the aggregate here. So there's definitely quite a few people who are choosing not to answer. Uh, And once again, I have lost the... Okay, this next one is starting now. Okay, we seem to have reached the end of folks actively participating in the poll, so I'll end the session. Um, 
The final question uh, really isn't a show of hands style question. Uh, it's for anyone who does not think a working group should be formed. Uh, do you wish to address the, uh, the BOF addressing your concerns? And I did notice that there was one person who apparently raised and then lowered and raised and then lowered and raised and then lowered their hand a number of times. So if you feel wishy-washy about it and wish to address the BOF with your concerns, um, you're, you're also welcome to join the queue now. Okay, I'm I don't think anybody, I'm not seeing anyone leap up to the mic queue and no one is in the queue. Uh, it is traditional at this moment then for us to turn it over to our area director to ask if there are any other questions the area director would like asked or any comments the area director would like to make. I just walked all the way to the mic to say, nope. Uh, not yet, no. This I think I got what I need for now, thanks. Uh, okay, uh, we did say that if uh, time allowed, we would uh, offer to host um, a, a technical presentation or two. Only one person uh, sent in such a technical presentation, uh, which was Suhas. Uh, so, the well-named, if time permits, quick R is now the, um, the draft. I believe it is pronounced quick R. Thank you. Thank you for that correction. Uh, Suhas, would you like to talk about quick R? Yes, I would like to talk about quick R. <laughs> OK, uh, thank you, Ted and Alan, for driving the, uh, the buff. Um, I, I'll try to give a quick overview of what Quicker is. Um, it's it's a media delivery protocol for Quick. Uh, I'll start by setting up some context on why we started thinking about Quicker. Right, Suhas, 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 Suhas yes, can you yes, speak louder and maybe a little, ironically for me, slower? <laughs> <laughs> OK, if it comes from Eckers, I'll try to do slower. <laughs> Oh, so uh, I, I try, try to talk about Flickr. Uh, uh, apologies here. I, I I wonder maybe if we should just move this to an offline meeting or some other time or something. I, uh, Suhas, the problem is we're we're just having a really hard time understanding you in the room. Um, so I I, I I don't know how important this is right now. It, unless, Colin, know. you want to speak to the slides since you're here? No, I want to okay. go for lunch. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Suhas, is that okay since we're having a hard time hearing you? Or I, I think uh, uh, that, that, would you like to try to fine. soldier through? Uh, I think that's a fine uh, suggestion. Uh, we can do an offline meeting and talk about more technical details. Okay. Okay. Uh, if that's going to be the case, uh, I think probably one of the things that uh, Alan and I will uh, chat with the area directors. Uh, that if they do in fact form a, a, a working group based on today's uh, BOF, that we will probably want to schedule a pretty early uh, interim meeting uh, before 115, uh, so we can start the technical discussions. Um, in since this this meeting was very firmly uh, focused on uh, charter scope and charter language, uh, there really weren't um, a whole lot of technical discussions which might. Uh, might have taken place here. Hopefully, those of you in Philadelphia are having wonderful hallway conversations uh, to do that. Uh, but that we might want to schedule um, some sort of interim meeting uh, on online or in person uh, to try and get those technical uh, discussions kicked off. Again, uh, pending the decision of the ISG and the uh, and and any final charter changes. Uh, does that make sense to folks? Uh, looks like Spencer is in queue. Uh, Spencer Dawkins, uh, Ted, if I could make what I hope is a friendly amendment. Um, I can't think of a good reason for uh, BOFs to not be able to request an interim meeting to work on charter text and things like that. Uh, if that. I'm not saying that that would be a good plan, but if the chairs thought that that would be a good plan, uh, you might want to you might want to explore with the area directors whether that would be 
uh, something that you could do as well. Um, I'd, you know, I just so, you know, November is a long time away. And uh, for us to be able to have uh, higher bit rate exchange uh, between now and then, if, if, if getting chartered is problematic, uh, that might be useful as well. Uh, yep, if it turns out that the, the community needs to discuss charter changes that the ISG uh, or the, the broader community requires, we can definitely do that as well. But I was also thinking uh, that the technical discussions uh, would be uh, a great topic of conversation for uh, a get together online or in person uh, sometime between now and 115 if if that made sense so if there if there's no uh, comments on that we can let people go off to lunch okay thank you everybody for coming and uh we'll see you on the list uh thanks again Thank you, Ted. Thank you, area directors. And uh, also thank you, note takers. How's it going? I mean, there were more people who wanted a working group than thought the problem was clear and um, solvable. <laughs> so, <laughs> let's make one anyway. <laughs> yeah.